So you want to start off by going to the Bitcoin site and what Bitcoin is really briefly for beginners it is an encrypted currency that is is generated on computers using the CPU power of your computer it can be traded and because it has an encrypted hash to verify its authenticity and that it's only spent once it can't be copied and spent again so it's a unique thing it was developed by a gentleman named Satoshi Nakamoto and it's a very complex technical paper that I'll, I will link here but I was very interested when I saw that price crash that began and it was kind of interesting that it coincided with the raid on Kitco in Canada I don't think there's any connection between the two but it's interesting that I think the powers that be are starting to worry a little bit about some of the alternatives that people are looking at as their fiat currencies are devaluing to nothing so to start off with what I found was a site on Mt. Gox which is one of the sites that you can trade bitcoins at and it had some instructions and I'll link this for you to show you how you can track the price and it's really neat software so the first step is you download and install the Sierra chart software and then there's a feed that has all the historical data for Bitcoin prices you download that and start the feed and it just runs and this is this is the feed right here and it just every time there's a trade of bitcoins it marks a price and you can see the price is at about fourteen dollars and twenty five cents per bitcoin and I think this next number is the volume but this is the feed that you feed into that software and this is the software here and you follow the instructions that they give you and it tells you to go to open a new intraday chart and then you'll choose the Mt. Gox feed which is bitcoins and US dollars and that'll give you this which is the latest prices for bitcoins now I like to put it in candlesticks and customize it so the easiest way to use this software as they instruct you on that page you use your F5 and F6 button so you go to F5 and what I will do is put in all the days for Bitcoin and then I also want to put it on candlesticks and then I will go to F6 which is the technical trading studies that you can use and of course I always use the MACD so we'll add that and I like to get some volume in there so we'll, we'll add the volume and then that's what you have now you can choose your daily this is a daily chart of Bitcoin prices you can see here's the dates down here just this week is when we had the Bitcoin explosion in price starting on the third basically it had been trading around two bucks to four bucks and then maybe ran up to about eight bucks and then just blasted all the way up to 32 bucks and we're back down to 14 bucks so huge move now you can scroll back and get historical prices using this which is a really neat function you just scroll your scroll bar and your technicals move with it and you can see it was not too long ago it was back in February that bitcoins were 73 cents uh, they just did a dollar for the first time so you can see we've had a lot of price crashes here's a run up from about 10 cents to 50 cents and then we go all the way back to last fall and that's the beginning of Bitcoin trading so they start off at six cents 
and they ran all the way up to $32. So congratulations to all the folks that were in this game from the beginning. I know DaVinci has really gone crazy about Bitcoins lately, and if he's been generating Bitcoins all through here, then he's done very well for himself. So I don't think that this is the end of it. I think that this is showing you that uh, something's really happening here. And is this going to be the key turn date that Martin Armstrong was talking about? Interesting. Maybe it's Bitcoins. Anyway, so to show you what I've learned, and by the way, Bitcoins can be traded anonymously. Uh, they're encrypted and the key is something that only that you hold. Now, I don't completely understand it, but you if you're anonymous on the internet now being anonymous on the internet is kind of difficult and I want to cover that real quick if you want to be anonymous on the internet you need to have Tor and Tor is an onion router it's uh, the concept is pretty simple to explain but very complex in how it works basically the onion router it puts you on a peer-to-peer -peer network with whole bunch of other users and then it brings your data back to you through an onion of routers and the IP address that you're using is not revealed and the IP address that you're going to is not revealed so anybody in between and then if you encrypt the data along the way they can't they can't hijack the data and find out what's in it because it's garbage to them and they also can't tell where you're coming from so Combine Tor with Bitcoin and you may have the potential for anonymous currency transactions, etc. So, very interesting stuff that's happening right now. I don't think the powers that be are too pleased with it, but I'm not sure there's really going to be much they can do about it. So, back to Bitcoin. Now, if you go to Mt. Gox, and I went there and signed up an account you go to the website sign up an account and you can buy and sell bitcoins now the question is how do you fund this account well you know you, you can bank wire it and there's other ways but the way that i decided to do it because I've, I've decided that i'm gonna try to play around and trade these and see how it works now if you hit a refresh on it you can see the price the latest price is right there 1425 1416 is the bid and you can see that uh, Mt. Gox takes 0.65 percent for each trade so that's that's fairly reasonable a half a percent I don't think that that's that high the spreads not that bad this is a new thing we're on the ground floor so I'm pretty impressed with that now if you want to add funds to this account there's a lot of ways you can do it. You can send cash or a check, and that's kind of a pain. And there used to be PayPal, but I don't think it's working. Now, I decided to do it with this Dwalla.com. There's a 25 cent fee, which is that seems pretty reasonable. If you go to Dwalla.com, you sign up an account there, and I signed up an account and then what you do is with that Dwala account what you do is you go to you can go to deposit money and you will enter in your and I took a uh, just a random savings account that I had and threw some money into it and I'm gonna wait for this to verify and then you put in your bank routing number you put in your account number and then once that's there I will transfer I think I'm gonna throw a hundred bucks over to this account then once I have this Dwala account funded then for 25 cents I can transfer that money over to Mt. Gox once I have a hundred dollars in Mt. Gox then I will be able to trade dollars for bitcoins and I just wanted to play around with it and see what I could do buying and selling bitcoins and since we had this tremendous bitcoin crash it uh, definitely piqued my interest but the fact that Bitcoin's at $32 a coin is absolutely stunning considering that they started from six cents. Now, I don't completely understand how all of this works, so 
any of you that do can explain some of the things to me that I don't understand what you do with your Bitcoin uh, well the way you generate them is by downloading the Bitcoin client which is a peer-to-peer -peer encrypted client which is running these hashes all the time and it's using your CPU to run these hashes as you can see I've got this Bitcoin client down here and it's running it says it has 20 connections and it's 130,180 blocks and I have zero a balance of zero bitcoins so apparently it takes a long time to generate the coins my understanding is that that your GPU your graphics processing unit has the ability to do a large a lot larger number of hashes than your CPU can do so I think that's what DaVinci was doing was buying machines with a bunch of GPUs and then uh, trying to generate his bitcoins using those your main cost is going to be the electricity to do so and I believe that the more people that are doing this the less chance you have of successfully generating the coins I don't know so I'm just gonna let this run in the background and see what it does and let this feed go so I have to wait for my Bitcoin account to I'm sorry I have to wait for my Dwala account to be verified then I'll transfer the funds and then I will start trading dollars for bitcoins there's some things I don't understand right now one thing I don't understand is how I can get a software program that can show me the type of hashes that are going on because I remember seeing on DaVinci's that he was watching the hashes in real time so if anyone has that send that to me the other thing I don't really understand is how you can get if I have these bitcoins say I have 10 bitcoins in my Mt. Gox account can I download those do I well, let's see, withdraw funds okay I guess oh here's my Bitcoin address so I put my Bitcoin address in there so I guess I just uh, when I have bitcoins in here I put the number and then I put my Bitcoin address which is based on my software and apparently it downloads those so that's something I have to play with don't really understand but uh, it's a fascinating concept apparently there's only 22 million bitcoins that are allowed to be produced and once those bitcoins are produced there will no longer be any more bitcoins produced then they will just merely trade in increments of bitcoins as the value of bitcoins goes up you'll just trade in smaller increments I think you can spend one bitcoin cent and even maybe you can go down to a tenth or a hundredth or a thousandth of a cent so I guess in theory once all the bitcoins are produced there won't be any reason to produce any more which will limit inflation or perhaps there's an algorithm for them to be generated at a certain percent in the future that's something else I need to investigate so decided to jump on the Bitcoin bandwagon and I will periodically let you know how it goes